Welcome back to another review and today I'm going to take a look at... Hold on. Oh! Oh! This thing is huge! Oh! The Prestige PS341WU monitor. Super widescreen monitor. Oh! This thing is heavy. And... Oh! The Prestige P100 desktop, both by MSI. There's no way I can unbox this in here and put this underneath my phone here. So I'm going to move over into the other room. First a disclaimer, MSI sent me the desktop and the monitor. Didn't have to pay for it. Thank you so much, MSI. So this is a sponsor clip. That being said, they wanted me to unpack this, use this, use this for my channel, for animation, all kinds of stuff, and then hear my thoughts. So even though I just got this for free, doesn't mean that I have to give this a positive review. So no one's gonna tell me what to say. So I'm gonna take a look at this from the lens of a, whatever I am, YouTube creator, animator, teacher, and I'm gonna use all my tools from my old computer on this new machine and see how it works, how it performs, how fast it is. Probably gonna be pretty awesome. Ah, okay, we have this here. That, that is the desktop. In here, paperwork, foam, blank looking box with cable, more cables, more cables, screws and documentation. And then, don't wanna break this. Let's take the foam off. Ooh. Oh, I'm gonna take that plastic off. Here is the desktop. It's very nice. Fake grill. I do love the white. Anything tech and white reminds me of Stormtroopers. Yeah. More plastic. Take this off too. It's very nice casing. The bottom of the little feet, little rubber feet so it doesn't slip. Here's your back side. Well, you got USB 2, USB 3, ooh, USB 3 VR ready. Oh, that's awesome. You got all your sound outputs, USB C for actually USB C display. Then you got HDMI display port, power, of course. And then on the side, you have USB, USB, must be two and three, yes. And then USB C, microphone and headphones. It's not too heavy, not too big, very elegant with the logo and the power button. It's actually a desktop you would showcase. Usually I have my stuff stuffed underneath the table. This one's nice, I have to say. Not because it was given to me, but it's actually looking really cool. I like the detailing, I like that. You can see, I bring this up close. Now, the monitor. That thing is a beast. It's a massive package. It's a huge box. Look at that. I'm gonna go back here. That's a big monitor. The most workout I had in ages. Time to open this up. Forgot one. All right, here we go with cables, power, audio cable. There's a lot of stuff here. HDMI, USB 3, USB Type C, display port, some screws, and something I can tell. I gotta open it up. Quick start guide, part of the stand. Looks like the base. Yep. That will be the stand. Nice though, very nice. Base, neck. Call out the neck. It's a lot of very intricate detailing all over, not just the desktop, but also the monitor. It's very cool. Assembly required. Here it is. Last piece. That is the monitor, look at that. Very thin bezel. Back side, again with the logo. And from what I saw and read, this is your navigation joystick. And this here, that's like the on-screen menu OSD button. You can reconfigure all kinds of stuff. Certain presets for the monitor, gonna fit nicely. 
pause this, let's assemble this and get back to it when I have it all installed. I'm very pumped. Boom, fast forward about four months. I got this computer about four months ago and I tried it and I used it, as I said, with my animation work, critiques, Maya, Premiere, Photoshop, all my daily applications that I use. And on top of that, VR. The back of the computer has a dedicated VR ready plug and the backside is absolutely filled with connection possibilities. As you can see, my dirty, dusty setup by now with all kinds of graphic card inputs and everything. But I use the front for VR. So you got the cable in there going all the way back for the Oculus Link to play Half-Life VR on the Quest, which was one of the big things for me that not only do I want to use this computer for regular work, but also for VR. And I think Half-Life VR on the Quest was a good test to see how can this computer handle the link with the Quest and Half-Life and the demands of that game. And I can say happily that it works flawlessly. This machine is an absolute beast. So by now I have two machines. This one has gravitated more towards gaming. So when I render things on my other machine, I go back on that to Zamaya work or do anything in Premiere and re-render things and but on top of that all the gaming and especially all the VR stuff with the Oculus Link and the Quest is on that machine. So before I go into the specs and all the other stuff I want to talk about if you are interested in this machine for heavy work be it animation be it editing and also gaming especially VR if you have a Quest and you want to use the Oculus Link to play Oculus Rift S games or Steam VR games it totally works it's fantastic. The other cool thing too is that the machine is fairly light so if you need to go back there and change some cables move it around put the machine on the table or move it forward to get a longer distance for a cable whatever you set up is it's really easy to move it around and, and to change things and re-cable things compared to the other machine that I have, which is a beast. It's a fantastic machine as well. They are the same specs, but it's a tank. It's so heavy. I will never move it. It's under my table and that's it. Whereas with this desktop, you can see with the light, I had it there as a little test to see with my old monitor and the new monitor kind of compare the render times there. It's a good looking machine. You can change the light at the front. So if you want to do this pulsating or going with the rhythm of music, or if you want a static light, you want to change all the colors of the light. That's absolutely no problem with that. And speaking of monitor, let's go into the specs as well and cover the desktop and the monitor string. Some provided photos since this is a sponsored clip. So what I have is a Intel Core i9, of course running Windows 10, comes with the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti. So I'm going to leave that on there. If you are interested in those specs, this is what the machine has. And so far, I haven't run into any problems in terms of slowdown, in terms of any freezes. It's really well built. Everything is optimized and I can talk about the OSD creator as well, which is really cool if you have the monitor and the desktop. That is the monitor that I have, a front and back beauty shots. It's a 5120 by 2160 5K resolution. And here is the, uh, the spec sheet for the monitor. I'm a big fan of the inputs, especially I'm a lefty. So the inputs are on the left side. This may or may not be important uh, to you, but I have my camera that I'm filming right now that is on the left side. So if I go and actually do this, you can see here's the monitor and I got the uh, inputs here for actually this camera when I'm done filming, I plug this into the monitor, which is plugged into the computer and then I can transfer the files there. I have all kinds of cables for my microphone set up down there. So everything's on the left side. Again, as a lefty, this is very uh, convenient for me. And it was fairly easy to set up. These are some beauty shots of that's the box when it arrived, when I assembled the monitor. Logos everywhere, of course. So at the beginning, I had this kind of setup where I had the desktop at the top. Again, the cables are on the left side. It's very easy for me to access. But the overall style is really nice. This was before when I had still two monitors. I'm going with the widescreen. I've gotten very used to all that real estate. And again, you can change the lighting. You can do all kinds of things with the front panel. Speaking of panel on the back, you got the joystick. You can change inputs if you want. You can customize this all. It's very, very easy to customize. It's all very clean and design is neat. And the only thing I would say after all those months now of using it, the only drawback for me is the sound. It's not that loud, but you can change the performance to performance high or silent. So there's more or less sound, but I have it on fairly high performance because of all the work that I do with it. But the thing is because of that, every now and then, and the machine goes you hear the fans are going. Now, when it's on your desk, I mean, I'm used to bad PCs all my life. I'm used to kind of the certain fan noise, but this goes on and off. And if it's right there and I had it here, so it's somewhat close to my mic. When I record something like this, that doesn't work for me. So I put it under the table. So if you have it there, just be aware that you will hear the fan noise go on and off. And if you have a mic right there, that might be a problem. I would say that's for me, the only drawback. I'm a huge fan of the monitor. Everything's great, works really well. Like I said, inputs are great 
great for me. I love the widescreen aspect of it. That's absolutely great. And the the portability of the desktop is great because I go back there and then change some cables. I test out different cables for the VR headset. And once the desktop is under the table, it has no impact on the mic. I can still do everything and record while the machine goes up and down in terms of its noise. But if I had to point out one thing, it would be the noise level. Even though it's not huge, not like, ah! It's really loud compared to the other machine. It's louder. The other machine is a tank and that's why I can't hear anything because it's this massively heavy thing. And the drawback with that is that it's down there on the other side and I'm never going to touch this again. I can't just bring it up and put it on my table. My table, it's so heavy. It's a beast. So pros and cons depends what you want to do. Do you want to move it around a lot? Do you want to open it up and change things and go behind and check the cables? That will depend on your setup. And if you have a sensitive mic that will pick up the sound. So that might be something for you. That's the only drawback that I could see, which is good because it is a sponsor post and I got that machine and the monitor for free. So you would think I should say positive things about it and I can. So the good thing is I don't have to lie. I really like the machine. I use it every day. I use it a ton for VR. It works with Half-Life VR, which is great. That was my big concern. Like, oh, I can actually do this and it's fantastic. So luckily I don't have to lie. It's a sponsor post, but I don't have to pretend. But I will be honest and the only thing would be the sound. For me, it doesn't work on my desk, even though it was great with the access and it looks cool with the light all that is cool but the sound going up and down with the fan just did not work with my mic so that's my honest review of the whole thing in terms of the the hardware of it the sound and the performance it's great now speaking of performance i do want to go a little bit more into the detail of the menu because if you do have this monitor and the desktop together when they're linked up they have that extra menu that comes up which is really cool so i'm going to show you the details of that now you will see this in a uh, squishy not squished form but it is a widescreen and i'm recording this in 1080p it's a bit different but as you have the the creator center it gives you all kinds of options in terms of overview of the cpu the gpu the memory and you can change this into a balanced process into more performance heavy or a quiet performance everything is also there for specific software so if you have premiere or maya you can turn this on and they will have specific sections and settings um, just for that software so you can allocate it, uh, you know, the processor power, just depending on that software alone, which is really cool if you need to customize that. It's a very in-depth menu where you can assign even hotkeys to your performance if you want it to be strong performance or silent performance and, and change your settings there. And of course you have a very detailed menu just for your overall performance and, and the monitor for the color correction, for the temperature, for menus and presets. Something else that you can find in the menu is that you can, again, set hotkeys for all kinds of things, but you have that little joystick behind the monitor to switch for inputs. So you can also set that to all kinds of options where I have it to switch inputs because again, I got two machines connected to one monitor. Uh, you can switch it to color temperature or all kinds of details. It's very customizable, which is neat. Something else that's actually kind of neat and I didn't expect to use this as much. I think, ah, eh, that's kind of overkill. I don't really need it, but it's actually really cool. You can divide up your desktop into different panel sections. So it's side by side or two panels or three panels, and you can assign it all kinds of windows. So when you start, you can say, I want it to be configured into cut at the top and one in the middle. Or it's almost like if you have Maya and you, you switch up your panels and you divide them up. But it's actually neat. I use this for critiques. So when I have my OBS and I got my movie to critique, I got all the different windows that I always have every time in my setup, I can click on the hotkey and it arranges everything exactly the way I need it. And it sounds like a gimmick. And to me, it felt like, ah, I don't ever use it. I actually do use it. And it just, it's that one more thing that helps you save time where you don't have to rearrange things. So you got, I just open the things that I need and then I click on that key and it rearranges everything. Bam, and I'm ready to critique. And good thing that Half-Life VR came out because I wanted to give you a bit more of an, a balanced overview and an impression of the computer. So not just with stuff that I'm doing here, but also VR. So you get kind of the full animation editing, creating type of thing, including gaming and VR. And I can really say just the machine works flawlessly. Now, if you are interested in this machine and also interesting timing with, with since it's been a couple months, MSI is actually hosting a creator awards competition. Again, link in the description with all the information where you can actually win this monitor and this computer. So check out the link in the description. Like I said, you got the MSA Creative Awards and you can submit your work in terms of video editing, 2D graphic design and 3D animation. 
and I will also be a judge, full disclosure here. I'm gonna be partaking in this in the Q&A and you can log in and watch the live stream. So check out the page. You can see here the old information in terms of what you need to do, the submission types. If you're into graphic design, animation, video editing, I'm talking about 3D animation tells you the details. And here is the judge criteria. Look at my face, here I am. I am part of this and look at that. So if you are an animator, and you're interested in this hardware, well, there it is. It's pretty bananas, so check it out. You have the timeline there, and all the information is down here. You can see the submissions already. They're coming fast and furious. Wow, it's pretty cool. You can win this monitor, this computer, submit your animation. I have to say, it's a really good machine. You can animate it like a beast on this. You can play VR, it's really cool. Again, not because it's sponsored, I'm using it every day. I mean, this is the monitor right here. Got the machine right there, I'm using it. And you can see on my channel, I keep posting and editing, critiquing, I do my own animation on there. Play VR, it's absolutely fantastic. So for me, it works really well. If you feel like this is something that you want as well, head over to that page, submit your animation, and maybe you're the winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> and again, all the information in the description, I will tweet about it as well. This is going to be happening soon, so get your animation fingers ready and win this machine, do it. Do it. And that's it, it's already a long clip, I'll leave it at that. Of course, if you're still watching after all this time, as always, I say thank you, thank you for your patience. If you feel like you wanna see more of my stuff, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button. I upload every day, except weekends. That's it for me, and I'll hopefully see you in my next upload.